This is Alex Cohen from the Dean McGee Institute. I want to share with you one technique for performing pterygium surgery with an amniotic membrane graft. Here we're placing a 6-0 vicral traction suture in the conjunctiva. We're marking the area for planned excision of the pterygium. And we're going to infiltrate this area with 2% lidocaine with epinephrine. This helps to balloon up the pterygium from the sclera and make dissection easier. One of our wonderful residents here is performing the dissection. Um, you can see the conjunctiva is being dissected away from bare sclera towards the limbus. This video has been sped up just a bit. Now we're dissecting the head of the trigium. I like to grasp the head of the trigium with a tooth forceps and pull it away from the eye and then use this number 57 blade to gently dissect at the level of Bowman's. Doing this prevents uh, going too deep and creating irregular astigmatism. And we use the edge of the 57 blade to really scrape down to bone ends and make sure that things are nice and clear. Gentle cautery is then performed to obtain hemostasis. And now we're going to use mitomycin C 0.02% soaked on Wexel sponges and treat the cut edges of the conjunctiva for approximately one minute. There's some great publications looking at various concentrations and times for treatment. So after one minute, we remove the Wexel sponge pieces and we rinse the eye copiously with a full bottle of BSS. So after the eye is rinsed, we go ahead and create an amniotic membrane graft that's appropriately sized. And now we're going to peel the graft from the paper that it comes adherent to. Now the stroma side is down, and that's what we would like the orientation to be when we're done. So we're going to peel the, the membrane off of this piece of paper onto the cornea and keep its orientation nice and flat, and then quickly flip it over. So now we have the stroma side down again. The tricky part with the amniotic membrane graft is trying to keep the orientation and keep it from really bunching up on itself. So here we're using two non-toothed forceps to just unroll the graft and then we'll bring it into the correct position in just a moment. I like to secure the graft with at least two interrupted vicral sutures. Some people use nylon, some people use no sutures whatsoever. But I find that two interrupted nino vicral sutures at the limbus creates uh, good adherence and prevents the graft from falling off in the postoperative period. Once we have those two anchoring sutures in place, we go ahead and flip the graft over onto the corneal surface and apply tissue tissue glue in the bed of the excision. I like to put one component on the underside of the graft and then place the other component in the bare scleral bed. The graft can then be quickly reflected into position and smoothed into place. Now the graft obviously is a little bit bigger than the defect, but I think that this is actually beneficial. We go ahead and tuck the graft in underneath the cut edges of the conjunctiva. Now the graft will dissolve over the next few weeks and this area will be covered with conjunctival epithelium eventually. The graft does help prevent recurrence and helps prevent a considerable amount of inflammation. Here we're placing two additional anchoring sutures in the cut edges of the conjunctiva just to ensure that this graft does not slip in the postoperative period. And here's the finished product.